Yeah, appreciate y'all. I like y'all set up is dope, G. I ain't gonna lie. I've been I've been around a lot of podcasts and the way y'all got this set up, the professionalism, the swag, the the just the <laughs> just the 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 look of um we run shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's that's the vibe I got in there. Y'all belong. So salute to y'all, bro. Appreciate, Appreciate you. That. <laughs> yeah, we like to approach it a little bit differently, uh, the way we have these conversations, and it's not to attack anybody that does podcasting because all of it's dope and everybody has their own lane, right? You, Facts. Got, you got people that are doing it like Vlad TV. Mm -hmm. uh, you got all the journalists that are out there that are asking phenomenal questions that they thought of for weeks. We think we want people to feel like that organic conversation. Facts. You know what I mean? All three of us want to talk. You know what I mean? We yeah. want to talk about some dope shit. We want to ask you some dope shit and we want to get to know who you are from you, right. not from what I saw from an interview, right, or what or what this person told me about you, or you beating people up in the crowd. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I want to know who Stephen Jackson is. So shout out to you. Appreciate you again for coming through. Honored, man. Honored. Thank what, you. What, sir. what made you Stephen Jackson? How did this begin for you? Uh, Port Arthur, Texas. Well, actually, let me start. I grew up in. I was born in Third Ward, Texas, same uh, neighborhood as George Floyd. Um, my mom was married to a man who was who was basically abusive, um, and, and was deeply into drugs. And uh, all my family was in Port Arthur, Texas. So my mom, when I was about maybe four, um, my mom got tired of him stealing her checks, going by mm -hmm. drugs, having people in and out the house, you know, no food. Like, she got tired of that, and it was just me and my older sister at the time. So Port Arthur's like maybe 45 minutes, an hour and 15 from Third Ward, from Houston. And that's where all our family is. So uh, we ended up moving there. Um, and I instantly, I think when I got there, I think it clicked for me, um, about how this small town that I was in and the love I got from it, you know, I wasn't dealing with my mom crying all day now. I had family, I had love, I had a support system, I had cousins, I had, you know, I had people to be around and play with. So it was a, it was a better feeling for me. So I, I, I started becoming into my own and like around four or five years old, I had, a, um, I was playing the YMCA. And it was a game where the final score was 42-40. And I had 40 of our points. Mm. And that's when, I, that's when I knew, you know, that, okay, basketball, this might be for me. I didn't know I was going to make it this far. But at that time, that's when I started coming into, you know, okay, they was calling me Baby Magic and Lil Steve. So that's when I was coming into the basketball player. And that's when I realized that this might be something that I might fall in love with. That's dope. So who, who had the 42? Uh, it was your team up, and so one one person on your team scored two. He had two points. Yeah, yeah okay. Perry Gobert. I remember Perry Gobert. He had two points. Got out the That's what I was wondering. I'm like, are you up or are you down on that with the 42? With the yeah. 40. And growing and growing and growing up on that west side, I grew up on the west side of Port Arthur. Uh, same hometown as Pimp C, Pimp C and Bumby, uh, UGK. Um, and around that time, you know, it was eight sets of projects, two high schools, one grocery store. So everybody knew everybody. Everybody was doing the same thing. Everybody was trying to figure a way out. Um, we all get to that point where as we're growing up, we get we get um, interested in what the stuff that we don't need to be interested in. You know, my whole family was in the church. I was in church a lot too. But being on that side of town, I got involved in a lot of things and a lot of people that I grew up with had me around some things that I shouldn't have been around. But I thank God, I thank God that I'm, I've been around because it made me who I am, made me tougher. Those experiences, you know, I'll I, I be proud to say that, you know, it's probably a lot of people that came along in the NBA that lived in the ghetto and that struggled. But I'm talking about street shit, and I'm not patting my back on it because I'm just, I'm just saying I'm glad I went through it because it made me who I am today. Ain't, it, ain't too, it ain't two NBA players that's been through what I've been through. Right when it comes to that type of shit. So, and like I said, I'm not bragging on it. I'm, I'm just glad, thank God that I went through it because I wouldn't appreciate the way life the way I appreciate it now. You know, all my blessings. You know, my children, just just the people around me. You know what I mean? Like even, you know, just Matt from everybody. They my everybody on my team know how how loyal I am. You know, you talk about the brawl. You wouldn't you do no shit like that if you don't love the person that's Absolutely. going. You know what I'm saying? So. Right. That that name, just growing up in that in that type of environment made me loyal to my friend. If one go, we all go. Mm -hmm. I learned that from being in club fights. I'm not starting <laughs> to fight, but my friends fighting. Mm -hmm. If you one go, we all go. Shit, we rode together. Same so. thing, you know what I'm saying? The bra. So that uh, people that know me understood why I didn't think twice. Because I've been in this situation before. So wow. my, my my city definitely made me, but it also protected me from a lot of things too. 
You know what I'm saying? That could have ruined my life. That's that's you got a story. And so with somebody like yourself, you had the you had every lane open to just go back to the streets instead of being in the league. Mm-hmm. And I feel like throughout your NBA journey, your relationship, regardless of whatever people thought of you, your relationships with the teams, the organizations, the coaches were Solid. all like how did you maintain that professionalism and keep out, keep that out of the way you handled yourself with that, with uh, the teams, with the coaches, with the other players? Well, I was being me, first of all. So it would have been hard for me, for them to come and tell me to do something different because I don't know how to be nothing but me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? First of all. Um, and I think I was, I was put in a lot of situations where – I had to grow. I had to learn. And I was willing to, you know, in San Antonio. You know, my first year in San Antonio. I just came from the rookie year. My rookie year, I was making the – I made the rookie all-star team. I get to San Antonio the first year. I don't, I'm on the injured list. I don't even play. So that was a culture shock for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not even playing. I'm not even wearing a uniform. Yeah. You know, to come back the next year. Now I'm starting and we win the championship. So, like, during that course of time, like, you got to – you got to – I said today on my, on my Instagram, I, I learned how to make love to the bad times the same way I make love to the good times, bro. Hey. You know what I'm saying? Because I've been through a lot. My family have been through a lot. I've seen my mama struggle. You know what I'm saying? And, and I always know it could always be worse, bro. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of what situation you're in, you can be high one minute and be at the bottom the next. So I always appreciate everything. And I think when every organization I've been in, you know, um, I gave my all. They was paying guys – 50 million more than me, but they weren't giving the effort I was giving. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They wasn't they wasn't staying after the game, shaking hands and talking to everybody in the arena. I was doing all that because I'm just that's just how I am. You know what I mean? So I think that 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 left a a pre- impression on people. But also, um, I think everybody that I was around, I had a relationship with in a different way. You know what I mean? From the janitors, from from the people that was the that, that was cutting the tickets, from people that's directing people to their seats. Yeah. I had a relationship with everybody, so, dog. Yeah, all the in between, and, and I wasn't even yeah. trying. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I'll be walking by and I see a, a older lady just standing there, and you know she might be looking like she's having a bad day. I mm-hmm. throw the ball to her. You know what I'm saying? She, you know what I'm saying? Just something like that, to, you know, yeah, to keep it yeah. going, man. So something small for you that it could equivalent something so much bigger for somebody else means a lot to the next, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So that's that. I just want. I just always treated people how I want to be treated, and the benef- the benefits of being real is so beneficial, and I live by that. I agree. I think that's the reputation that you want to be spoken when you're not in the room, you know, because that's the most important sh- shit right there. Is what you gonna say when my back? When is, I'm not around. When I'm not around. Oh well. Matter of fact, he takes time to stop and say hi to the janitors and what's mm-hmm. up to the locker room guys and what's up to the, the, the fast food staff or whoever it is. And that stuff definitely, uh, I hope you hope that that reputation meets people before they meet you. Exactly. You know, that's I mean? a great yeah. way to put it. it real quick. And, and then even better, you hope that that's a reputation that stays and remains because, you know, that's definitely something that we wanted to talk about. You know, in that moment when all that stuff happened, you kind of did have to basically re-represent yourself, reintroduce yourself. Mm -hmm. Because now all of a sudden it's, these basketball players are fighting the fans. And that's the thugs, literally thugs in the newspaper are fighting the fans. We can't, like, not really, you know, uh, dissecting the the situation and what really happened and realizing that y'all, like I've heard you say, we were at work. And you don't, you got to be from our culture to understand that, though. Mm -hmm. Like, I know a lot of people that would have been cool with going back in the locker room, they fine, they ain't getting in trouble. But they teammate, but my they teammate getting carried out on a stretcher. Better him than me. Mm. I can't I can't live like that. I've never been that yeah. guy. And I know a lot of people ain't like that. You know what I'm saying? So me doing that, you know, everywhere I go, bro, I would have did the same thing. Yep. Our yep. people. So, yep. you know, to for me, you know, I care what I, my people think. Word. You know what I'm saying? If you Word. ain't my people, I don't care. But my people that love me, that genuinely love me, and I don't care what race you is, if you genuinely fuck with five, I care about how you think. But if you don't, I, I don't care at all, Jeez, dog. Go, yeah. go about your business. Yeah. Go on elsewhere. Facts. Take that elsewhere. No, you're not wrong for that, though, because, you know, if God forbid everything does go wrong, that's them the people that you finna go back to and lean back on. So if, if your reputation ain't good with them, what do you really have to stand on? You know, no disrespect to anybody who's homeless out there or, you know, on hard times, but I always – kind of looked at them and said, man, you must have burnt so many bridges to get that far. Because I know, you know, if I didn't have a job or something like that or if I didn't have a place to stay, I could I could surf a couch. I could figure out a situation. Family, I yep. could sleep in the car and take a wash at L.A. Fitness and figure it out. But mm-hmm. 
for you to get all the way that far, you must have really burnt your bridges. So it's important to make sure you stay true to who you are. So in hard times, you can't go back to home. Yeah. And they still know you. And you, so. but you know what, bro? To, to, to take it a little further, there's some homeless people that really didn't have no control over where they at. And I get what you say. There's some people that you can't make no excuses for. But it's, it, I've seen some people, bro, in life that just was dealt a bad hand. Never had a real and, crack and, at it. And they didn't have the strength or the support system to get back up. People don't know. Having a support system is everything. I don't care what you're doing, bro, especially in life. Because we all to go through ups and downs. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We all go through things that, that we're not prepared for. We all go through things that, that, that bring tears and that bring sadness to our fi- families and households. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? If you don't have a support system, it would be hard for anybody to deal with something like that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, I... I, I I, I look at it as if I woke up one morning and felt like I'm better than all them, I could end up that same homeless person. Mm. So so I always, I'm just happy. I'm, I'm going to be the best Steven Jackson I can be, and I'm competing with myself every day. Hey. I look in the mirror, I'm competing, with, I'm competing with that guy. You know what I'm saying? I want him to get better. I wake up every day to show I lie. I deserve everything that he blessing me with because I know I'm not no different than nobody else, but I'm not no different than y'all. You know what I'm saying? And the way they talked about me when I was playing in the NBA, how they tried to make me a bad guy, make me a thug, it's so great. It feels so great right now <laughs> to still be here doing what we're doing, what me and Matt doing with this podcast. So, you know what I'm saying? The, just just, just stay down and stay solid, man. And, you know, time will pass. You know, I worked hard to get my my name back after that brawl shit. Because, you know, sure. I, got in the, I got in the strip club shootout the next year, right after that. So it was all bad for a minute. But, you know, I was both times I was being loyal. But I learned something. You know what I'm saying? I can, I'm not going to be riding for people that ain't going to ride for me. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So Hello. that was a lesson in that. Yeah. And it's tough because everybody wants to be around you. As an athlete, you for know. sure. Yeah, because you... Well, whoever got money, brother. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Even if they don't. They're like, hey, let me right. Know you know what I mean? <laughs> facts, you know what I mean? They might be able to pull something, Get too. a little taste, Yeah, bro. go ahead. Yeah, I had to go run out and grab that for y'all bro. real quick. Yeah, appreciate 